how important was his defensive work against Lammers? Yeah, there were a few storylines, but I don't think there was any bigger than what Jack, the way he impacted the game. And, you know, statistically, you look at it and, you know, he, he six rebounds, played 35 minutes. He was just, he made, that's a good player. Um, uh, ben Lammers is a good player and he made him earn. He played with his hands free. He fought his position and showed his strength and that that was impressive, and I uh, I really enjoyed that. I wa I just I love seeing that because it was I think a huge key for us in the game because that guy can score and and play uh, make some plays. Uh, Mario's confidence has just uh, rose in the since he's got insert in the starting line. Is that something he was just waiting um, no. to have happen, or is no? It I, I mean, if if it was, he's better than that. I, he it was okay. Now I'm now I'm going to start. Now I'm going to play and have confidence. I don't know, not at all. Just think he started playing better. We went with a physical lineup. And he's played well. It started, I think, at Pitt, and he's always shown good stretches. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think he's getting more comfortable in establishing the spot. And you'd have to ask him. Maybe he would say, "Hey, starting just unlocked everything, and now I'm good." I, I don't think so. But um, I liked his ability to, you know, play off the bounce and score and, and work hard and did a good job. And I think Devin Hall, you know, he really rebounded well when we put him in at the four spot or. Um, even when he's at the guard spot. So uh, it was a hard-fought game. You know, Georgia Tech throws different actions at you. We saw a 1-3-1, one, one, a boxing one, or a diamond in one. We saw a matchup zone, some man-to-man, -man, some press. It's just, it's a lot, and that's why it's kept people off balance. So a guy like Mario who can maybe just bounce up, make a shot is, is important. And I'm so happy to see him playing at this level, and we'll need it to continue because he's a hard worker. Yeah, Tony, you said before the season that obviously London will get different defensive looks. Had you ever practiced much about him going with the box in one? And how do you think you guys handled that? Today? Yeah, I thought we got, you know, we made probably four threes early. Um, and then you look at that five of 22, and most of those were wide open rhythm shots that you have to take. That's a lot of threes. But um, in our traditional, our offense, our base offense, when we've got it either triangle and two or box in one has worked well. Um, and again, we got the look. So I was confident in that. It was just, you know, knocking down some of those shots, which we didn't. But, um, but yeah, he got a lot of looks. He started off real hot real early. I think we fell in love a little bit with the three after that. And um, again, um, you know, we turned it over at, you know, some inopportune times. But you had to keep playing because that's what Georgia Tech does. They're going to keep playing. And, and Josh has done a nice job with that group. It's, it's, it's Princeton kind of offense and mixing up the defenses. It's only two things, the green ties, matching green yeah. ties. What was that all like about? Um, uh, it's, um, it's an initiative. It's coaching for literacy, um, and it's just to raise awareness for that. There's about 40 or 50 teams that are partnering up with them. And, you know, it's, um, it's just a thing, especially at a school like Virginia. Um, Coach Sanchez brought it to our attention. We've done it for, I think, two or three years. And this year they gave us these sweet-looking ties to wear. But it's, um, you know, it, there's 65% uh, of fourth graders that do not read at the proper level. And so it's about awareness. There's, I think, a buddies for books or books for buddies. And it's just that kind of idea. And I, I like it because I think what Virginia stands for and a uh, chance to just raise awareness. So those people I told the tip-off club were going to email about me not wearing an orange tie, it's for a good cause. So they need to back off, and there's a, a bigger perspective going on here. But I wish they would have been orange, but they're lime green. It's the wrong color, but I thought it might be Packers related. Yeah, no, well, yeah, right, yeah. This is for the Packer game. <laughs> Tony, how important is Mariel's willingness to kind of take on a bigger part of the offensive load when London is is getting as much attention as he as he is today? Yeah, no, Mariel. I've said this. I think the last couple times he's wired to score. He can sh score off the bounce. He can. Um, do some things, and um, that's just the way he is. So that's important. Again, we mentioned it. There's no secret that we don't just throw it inside and get a lot of interior scoring out of our interior players, our forwards. So Mariel's ability to put it on the floor, take those shots, and create some offense is, uh, is helping us. Two things. Uh, you really shut down their offensive rebounding. What did you do in the second? Josh Akogi yeah. had one shot in the second half. What, what was going on there, you think? Yeah, yeah, I look at that because they're, you know, with, um, again, and I, it's either Lammers or Lammers. Apologize if I'm pronouncing it wrong. And Stevens, Lammers. Okay, thank you. Um, he, um, those guys can get on the offensive glass. And I just thought we were in good position. And Jack and Devin and guys were coming back and rebounding. And and Josh really had a good first half. Um, and I just thought we we made it hard. We you know we're we're trying to adjust and do some things defensively. And we just 
kind of made a simple adjustments in the second half, and I think it helped our defensive rebounding and made them play a little more over the top than stuff at the rim, which they got in the first half. Tony, your guys make the extra, make the extra pass even when there's two seconds left on the shot <laughs> clock. Yeah. Uh, how much emphasis do you put on that? How much do you work on that to make sure that they do that? Yeah, that was a big bucket. I think Devin hit, and we had a, a great possession against Boston College where they moved the ball. You know, you just you want them to pass up an okay shot for a better shot, and uh, they're very they're very uh, unselfish. That's the one thing the way they play offensively. There's not. Um, we talk about Mariel, he's assertive and aggressive, which is good, but they have a, a next pass mentality. And, you know, just you watch the way Isaiah, Jared, Jack, uh, Mom and the way they'll screen for each other without getting many touches, and they're so willing. And again, the guys will move the ball. And that's, um, to me, that's, that's when you take uh, the good and make it even better. And I think that's what's happening. Tony, you held them to, I think, seven points in the first 10 minutes of the second half. What did you like defensively in terms of the way you guys tightened? Well, up? I think they were looking to go inside at times um, to Lammers, you said, right? <laughs> and, um, and I thought Jack, again, was just there. He was a presence. You know, sometimes we'll trap the post, and we didn't this time because Jack, we just thought, okay, we can dig in there with our guards and make Jack wall up and play over the top. And um, they didn't get too many. They missed a couple easy ones, but they didn't get too many easy ones. It was more contested shots than early on. St Stevens gave you a lot of trouble last year in Atlanta. He played well against Virginia Tech the other night. What was your strategy against him? Looked like Isaiah did a really good job on him. He did. The two threes he hit, I thought, were well. Well, one on Devin and one on Isaiah were pretty well contested. And it was just trying to, again, if he's going to shoot, crowd him. He's got to really rise up and make those shots where you feel like, OK, I'll take my hat off. And again, for the most part, we did that. And um, you know, you look actually at he had 13 rebounds. That's impressive. But he, um, he didn't get as many shots. I think early on, we weren't letting him get them. And then they were more contested when he took them. By the time you play at home again, you will have played road games at Notre Dame and then Villanova. What what kind of challenge does that present? And can you think of a back-to-back -back road stretch <laughs> like that in your coaching tenure? Yeah, I'm sure I've played. I, I have to look. But we, when I was in the Pac-10 here, you, you just it happens, you know. Um, Pac-10, we'd play always Thursday, Saturday on the road. I'm um, sure some of those. But um, quality, quality opponents. Um, you know, Notre Dame's playing at, at an elite level offensively. They're terrific. I mean, the way they – you talk about sharing the ball and uh, making the extra pass. So yeah, there'll be a great challenge, a great opportunity. And I told our guys, you got to love the challenge. And then, um, then we'll address the next one. Good try, Jeff. Uh, I believe London went over 1,000 points tonight. Yes. Uh, he's also over 500. I think he's one of four or five in school history. What do those numbers mean? Over 500 assists. Assists, yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, that guy's been a part of a lot of winning. And uh, that's impressive. And he just, um, you know, his completeness and his steadiness um, we're, we're, they've been so good. You saw that in him from his first year here. And that's, uh, that's no small thing for a guy who's as unselfish as London is and to score that many, you know, 1,000 points, 500 assists, I, I like that. And uh, I'm going to keep, gonna keep twisting the knife on the turnovers. I don't know if he's going for that. That's uncharacteristic. But uh, he, um, you know, he's such a, a key to this team. And um, he, um, he makes big shots, and he's done it. And what a three and a half years that he's had, and we got some more.